and welcome to more Dakaru Cube Draft. Honestly, I had no idea Nexus of Fate was in this cube. It seems kind of odd. I don't think I would run it, but that's interesting. Uh, what, do we, what do we want to take here? There is Gilded Lotus. Um, I know there is a Wildfire deck, and that seems like a lot of fun, but it also seems like it would probably have trouble keeping up with some of the aggro decks. That being said, I still maybe want to try it. Um, what do we want to, what do we, I actually don't know what the correct pick is here. I know Rites of Initiation is absurd. If you can get a lot of tokens, Mother of Runes is good if you want to go aggro. And I think the aggro decks are very well positioned in this format. I don't know if I'm I'm ready to say that they're broken, but um, I guess Hellrider is probably just better than Mother of Runes, huh? You know what? Let's just take a Hellrider. That actually seems very good. With a lot of tokens, aggro being good, um, incidental damage or damage to the face is really strong. And there's a lot of archetypes or strategies that create a bunch of tokens. So being able to just Hellrider, ooh, <laughs> okay. A Rampaging Ferocidon is also quite good against token decks, right? Um, you just play this, they can't gain life, and then it does damage to them whenever they play a thing. So that's good. This is like a Magma Jet that can't go to the face, but you only scry one, but it's still quite good. Blood Crypt is also nice because uh, I think Black Red are very strong, and so being able to play both of them is good. But I think I'm just going to stay focused and take the Ferocidon. It's also just a 3 mana 3 3 menace aside from all the other benefits, so like playing both of these together is a really scary combination. Um, we can take Dragon Skull Summit or a Goblin Crater Maker. I guess there is also Magmatic Sinkhole. Um, I guess Kai's Gal Gutter Bones are also pretty good, but I don't think I'm gonna go there. Windfall is also interesting. So Windfall is, what it says is each player discards their hand and then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards. So if you are playing a burn deck or a low to the ground creature deck, and then you Windfall, and your opponent still has like 6 cards in hand. Um, this is like a 3 mana draw 6, because your opponent doesn't actually gain cards. Um, I don't think with our start we're going to be too low to the ground of a deck, so I think I might just speculate on a Dragon Skull Summit just to see what's open. Ooh, Falcon Wrath Gorger. Getting the 1 drops is important. Reckless Bushwhacker is very good if you have a lot of, you know, things like Falcon Wrath Gorger, just because you can like play it, give them all haste. Um... Sulfur Springs, if I do think I want to go that route. There's also Scrap Heap Scrounger, which is just a 2 mana 3 2. And I think that's probably better than both of these. If I can, I already have black mana, so um, I can get it to come back sometimes. And 2 mana 3 2 is well above the base rate you would expect. There's a Blood Artist. There's also Gurmag Angler and a Mind Stone. I think I'm just going to speculate on this Blood Artist. Um, we don't really need the life gain from this the main benefit of this card is that it does damage to your opponent and so comboing that with something like rampaging frosted on um, plus hellrider like <laughs> it makes your opponent in a very bad spot um we can take a pocker site if we think we want to sacrifice this is a five mana six six trample that puts a creature into play and it's also like impossible to kill because if they try and kill it we can just put it back on top it doesn't have haste so that's something to, something to note um, and then there's Secure the Waste, which is also really strong with what we have going on. Good with Frostadon, Hellrider. Well, not necessarily good with Frostadon. I don't think I'm going to take Apocrisite. I think I might just speculate on Secure the Wastes. Um, we could end up in any number of these colors, really. Um, Here's Wrath is okay. It can't go to the face, which is something to note. Carrion Feeder is pretty good if you have all these tokens, but I'm not sure what color we're going to be in. I don't think I want to take Precinct Captain. So maybe I just take Temple Garden in case I get like a red-green fetch. Then I can get red-white that way. Um, unbreakable, for unbreakable Formation is also good. Uh, maybe I just take Carrion Feeder. I do have Blood Artist. All right, fine. It's more likely to be good. There's a Polluted Delta that helps with the mana. Not currently, but it might eventually. Um, if we get a Black-Red Duel. I think we pass Blood Crypt, though. So the rest would enter tapped. Um... There's Direfleet Daredevil, which is good. Phyrexian Arena, which is pretty good. I really do like Mimic, Mimic that, but I'm just going to take the Polluted Delta. I'm not really sure what colors are open. I saw Black Red, or I saw Red being open, or just good cards in the first couple picks, but it seems like it might be drying up because I'm not seeing that much. And it'll. Now we're going to start seeing if Red is wheeling, so then you can determine if Red was in the packs and people were taking it, or if there just weren't good Red cards in the pack. Because there was Jai's Greeting, I think, in this pack. And there was a good red card, I think, in the following pack as well. So if we don't see those, then we know to probably stay out of red or make it be a splash color. Okay, so Jai's Greeting is gone. 
Um, there is rights of initiation, but I feel like triplicate spirits is kind of a, uh, it's hard to say. This card is a really good enabler too. But the problem is if you're playing red, you're going to empty your hand pretty quickly. And then you're not going to have too many cards to discard to this. I think I'm going to speculate on triplicate spirits and maybe try and move into red white because, or red black. Yeah, I don't think red is necessarily open here. Um, we can take Freebooter if we think we want to go black, which we do have Blood Artist Carrion Feeder. We can take Dragon Hunter. There's also Charter Course, which is fine. I think I like the versatility of... Uh, I don't know. I like the versatility of Freebooter. It's hard to say, though, because blue is also quite open. So, And we got Crater Ma Maker back. So it's really hard to tell what colors are even being drafted. And I have that problem every time I drop this cube. It could just be there's so many good cards that... You know, you never get last pick bad ones. Kaya's Guile is good, but I'm going to speculate on blue being open, actually. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Benelish Marshall is huge. Yeah, Benelish Marshall is huge. There's also a late Rancor, but this is a really good sign. There's a Vindicate. Wolf your Silver Heart is interesting, but we'll take Vindicate. We'll take a Digraph Ghoul. I was going to take that earlier. Spider spawning. Kind of funny. All right, so blue. We have the Windfall. I don't think red is open. There were quite a few good red cards. We did get Crater Maker to come around though. But black white is looking kind of more reasonable for what we have going on. Smuggler's Copter. I keep getting this card. <laughs> it's good every time. Um I don't think I pass it. Like it it does everything you want. I think I last time I didn't draw it really ever, or if I did, they killed it right away. But a three power creature for two mana is so good. So we're gonna take that, hope to wheel a grave crawler or intangible virtue, probably. Okay, we have Charming Prince. Doom Whisper is a big thing. I don't know if it's necessarily the best thing. Duplicant is a really good ability. Anji's Ravager is very good. Um, if you can empty your hand and then just start beating down, I like that a lot. But I think we probably want to go Heavy White because we got a very late Benelish Marshall, which indicates that the color is open. We also have Secure the Wastes so and Triplicate Spirits. So... Kind of playing into that, I think I'm just going to take the safe pick of Charming Prince. And we're going to wheel something kind of crazy out of this pack, because like every card in here is playable. And we'll just see where we go from there. Uh, there's a Tide Hollow Skuller, but I'm going to take Godless Shrine. Also Gaunti. Ooh, and a Pack Rat. Oh no. Oh no. Do I just take the Pack Rat? Godless Shrine's like the perfect card for this deck. And there are a lot of good playables, so it's possible Godless Shrine comes around. Um, but this, I mean, this is the perfect duel for the deck, and it's good with Polluted Delta. The problem is Pack Red is like an unbeatable card sometimes. But if I'm trying to run Benelish Marshall, because I think this card is really good, I'm going to have to make sacrifices for the mana base. Oh, man. I, I think there's a, like a 0% chance Pack Red comes around, but I think it's also very unlikely Godless Shrine comes around. I'm just going to take the Godless Shrine, because we're not even guaranteed going to be black. Oh. No, I'm not sure. I can take a Verdant Catacombs or a Fabled Passage. Catacombs for Godless Shrine is pretty nice. Um, Fabled Passage lets me splash any colors I want. Also, Giant Killer is really good, but I think that will probably come around given how open white looked in the last pack. Catacombs for Godless Shrine versus Fabled Passage for anything. I think I'm going to take the Catacombs. Because uh, if I already get Godless Shrine, I'll take the Passage. There's also a chance that Verdant Catacombs comes around. And then we'll be in even much better shape then. History of Benalia is a great pickup. Pumps up your knights, which this is a knight. These are not knights, fortunately. This is a human noble, but we'll take this. Maybe we wheel Earthquake or Massacre Girl, but I'm not too upset if we don't. Settle the Wreckage is very good. It's a good trick to have. There's also not a whole lot else. I feel like we maybe should be um blue-white, because we have some good blue cards floating around, but... We'll take Settle, it's a very nice card. There's a Silent Clearing that also helps with black white mana and it's a land that lets us draw cards, so perfect for our deck. Vryn Wingmare, Swords to Plowshares, that's a very good card. Um, otherwise there's Murderous Cut. I like Vryn, Vryn, Vryn Wingmare. Also Grafted Wargear is pretty good. A three mana equipment that gives plus three plus two is nice and you can equip it without sacrificing something. Um, the only cost is then you have to, if you want to move it, Sacrifice a creature. So it's really nice with tokens, but it's hard to pass up what is like literally the best removal spell ever printed. Uh, we didn't wheel something. I'm trying to remember what it was. I don't know what it was, but there's a declaration in stone, which is a fine removal spell. 
Hmm. What is our colors again? Is that this blue looks very open? I'll take a memory lapse because I don't. I have a polluted delta and a fabled passage. Sure, because blue feels relatively open. Okay, Tide Hollow Scholar wield the pack rat did not as we expected, which is fine. Stagger shot came around, which I did not expect. I, I like Tide Hollow Scholar more than fine finality, um, just because it's proactive. Verdant catacombs actually did come around, so it looks like we speculated correctly. The reason for taking this over catacombs is anybody can put this in their deck and it's going to be good plus the art is awesome um not as many people can play verdant catacombs in their deck and have it be playable so um you know if we're trying to get both we take fabled passage first here if there was brain freeze in the queue we would take kozilek just in case here we can take citadel order of midnight is pretty nice i don't think i really need the green splash but you never know and then we go from there there's ancestral blade Crypt Breaker, but I don't, let's see, I have Carrion Feeder, Digraph Ghoul, Blood Artist is not a zombie. Angel of Sanctions is also pretty good. Just a five mana play that exiles something. But this is, it's a one mana to equip, right? Yeah, that seems really good. And this is a soldier, not a knight. I think I'm gonna take the Ancestral Blade. Ooh, Figure of Destiny. Ooh, there's a lot of good cards in this pack. Figure of Destiny, Dread Wanderer. Seeker of the Way is okay, I don't think I'm gonna take it. Um. Vanishing Light. I think I take Figure. Let's see, what do I have as far as removal? We have Vindicate, Settle the Wreckage, Declaration in Stone, Swords. I think we have a good bit of removal. Um, I'd rather just have early plays that hit hard. Maybe we can wield Dreadwander or Seeker of the Way. Oh, Manitive. Now this is a card we're going to wheel. <laughs> um, Porcelain Legionnaire is just better. Um, and who's going to take Manitive, right? Like, we can play this. It's a 2 mana 3 1 first strike. That's really good. Uh, this card is a 4 mana 5 3 trample haste, which is also a very nice top end card. So, if we don't wheel mana tithe, we're probably going to wheel this. Both of them will be good for the deck. But, a 2 mana creature that hits hard is exactly what I'm down for. Imposing Sovereign helps us beat down. It's a 2 mana 2 1. There's also Ninja of the Deep Hours. But, I don't think I can really afford to put a basic island in my deck if I'm trying to play Benelish Marshall. Um, I don't think I like these swords. They're fine, but whatever. I could take a Glacial Fortress, but again, I don't think I really need to do that. So I'll just take Imposing Sovereign. Uh, Arid Mesa helps with the mana. Conclave Tribunal is a good removal spell, but... Let's see, this just gets white. Basically, we have like infinite copies of Godless Shrine. And if we actually put Arid Mesa in, it's possible we could get red into the deck somehow. Just for... Like, Hellrider would be so good, but I don't think we can get double red yet. Unless we take Arid Mesa and wheel Canyon Slew. We already have 21 playables. I'm going to take the fetch. We're going to find more playables. Dreadhorde Invasion is very strong. Missing out on Spirit of the Labyrinth and Soldier of the Pantheon. I think that's okay. This is It's a worse Bitter Blossom, but it still is a pretty good Bitter Blossom. Silverblade Paladin is absolutely enormous. Necrotal is also good though. But I think I like the Double Strike more. Uh, Tithe Taker, Oust. I kind of like Oust. Although, this is a soldier, it's not a knight. It does make a 1-1 one, one if it dies. But the tempo on Oust is pretty good. It's also just a 1-mana play. And I have so many 2-drops. I'll take Oust. Like the poor man's swords to plowshares. There's a Flame Tongue Kavu. I'm not going to play Mind Slaver or Chalice, so I'll, I'll speculate on Kavu. I don't think I'm going to get there, though. Uh, Seeker of the Way. Do I have... A lot of non-creature spells. One, two, three, four, five. I have some. So in some matchups, this card is going to be phenomenal. It's probably better than Aether Hub 2. Oh man, we got both. Mana Tithe and Fleet Real Cruiser. I think I like the Tithe in this cube just because every deck is going to be so good that mana consistency is important. This does hit hard, but I think I want the interaction. Here I can take Sword of Vengeance, I guess. I don't think I want to play it. Plus two plus zero, oh, first strike, vigilance, trample, haste. So if I equip this to a random two two, it's going to become a three four two first strike, vigilance, trample, haste. That's okay. I might play smallpox when we get soldier. All right, I'm definitely not playing the sword. Can I cast smallpox? Can I put smallpox and Benelish Marshall in the same deck? Um, Dragon Skull Summit Summit seems okay because it helps me with figure of destiny. Let's look at 28. So I need to make quite a few cuts. Maybe I don't main deck smallpox because 
it's not good in all matchups and it's really going to stress my mana base. Uh, I don't have too many synergies with Carrion Feeder. I guess Blood Artist is the only one, which is actually a pretty good one. And Dreadhorde Invasion. Okay, Carrion Feeder is pretty good. Um, Freebooter, I like all of these. Maybe I cut Digraph Ghoul because getting black mana early is going to be a bit challenging. I could get rid of Settle the Wreckage, but I like having it as like something to draw to. If opponent gets a little bit too aggressive, we can just hit him with it. Although maybe we don't need it because we're just trying to be proactive. Charming Prince. Is Charming Prince even good? I guess it's a 2 mana 2-2 two, two Scry 2. So yeah, I think it's fine. I like this. I like all of these. Mana Tithe and Alistar are really good tempo plays. Vindicate, Silver Blade, History. We could side in Blood Artist against the creature matchups. Because in some matchups it's going to do absolutely nothing. But I think it's still good because the, the life gain is relevant. I just need to make one cut and I'm not sure what it is. I kind of feel like it should be Carrion Feeder because right now it's a 1 mana 1-1 one, one, and I don't have too many recursive creatures. At which point I kind of want to cut Blood Artist. But I... Hmm. No, I think it's proactive enough. It like makes board wise pretty rough. Okay, so I think I'm going to play 1 Swamp. No Mountains. 16 land. So as far as black sources go, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... That's actually a lot. That's so many black sources. Although the biggest downside is we basically just have Godless Shrine. So we have these two fetches can only get Swamp Godless Shrine. I think that's okay. It's just if we have just those two, we are stuck with two black sources. And then basically anytime we see a creature deck, we put in Settle the Wreckage. You know what? I think I like main decking it more than Blood Artist. Nah, nah, I don't know. I'm going to try this. See you guys around one. Oh, right, we're on the play against Druze2002. This hand is good. We'll keep this. Um, I can Arid Mesa for Godless Shrine, although I don't really want to fetch Godless Shrine there because I already have black mana, so I guess we're just going to Arid Mesa for a Plains, at which point I can just play Dragon Skull Summit turn one. Yeah, that makes sense. Because we want to keep the black, fetch, the black lands in our deck so that the fetches we draw um, can like fetch every turn. There's our Blood Artist. Probably a lot better than Settle the Wreckage in this position. So I'm going to fetch because I don't really need that many more lands. Get Plains. And I'll start with the Scholar. We'll disrupt their turn 2 play. Oh boy. What the heck? <laughs> Something's going on over there. Um, so if I take Cultivate, can they really do much? They can Memory Lapse me, I guess. Which I can play my Blood Artist, they memory lapse it. Although Blood Artist is going to be good against Secure the Wastes. I can also just take Secure the Wastes. Because they're going to be able to make a bunch of tokens. But that's I guess really bad against Blood Artist. So I'll just take Cultivate. Or, what if I just take Memory Lapse? If I take Memory Lapse, they do nothing next turn. Yeah, that actually makes them very slow. Because they're going to ramp into Secure the Wastes. But then I'm going to play Blood Artist. And their token is going to like trade for mine. They're going to lose a ton of life. They play Aether Hub, they get a thing. That mana base is something of beauty. Oh, this is even better. So I can attack for two. And then, oh, I like this a lot. I can, so next turn they're gonna cultivate. I wanna put down as much power as possible. Cause I, I, what I'm thinking about doing is Charming Prince resetting my Todd Hollow Scholar to give them memory lapse after I've played all my creatures. And then I just take Secure the Waste, their only interaction, and then they have a bunch of mana and nothing to do. I like that a lot. I'm just deciding, do I fetch? Yes, I do. Let's get a Plains. Oh, I guess it enters tapped. Well, that answers my question of do I pay life. In fact, I guess I can just play the Scrap Heap Scrounger. So here they're going to spend their Aether Hub, probably, to play a Cultivate. They play Plains that we know about. They play Cultivate. And I think... I think now I'm going to reset my Tide Hollow Scholar and just take their action. Two forests. This deck is absurd. <laughs> um, so we know four of their six cards. We draw a Godless Shrine. So let's attack for five. Play Charming Prince to see what's going on in their hand. They get memory lapse back, then we get to go planes into Legionnaire. 
Show me your hand. So Sundering Titan is going to hurt them a lot more than it hurts us. And they have 1, 2, 3, 4. They're just going to have 5 mana. So I would just take Secure the Waste. I think they just die. Um, I don't even know what is in their hand anymore. This Swamp, Thran Dynamo, Forest. They play Thran Dynamo. Okay, so I think that's their hand. And they're going to play Island to hold up Memory Lapse. What did they draw? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So they fall to 3. Okay. So I think they're just holding up memory lapse. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 mana. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They play land, they go up to 9. So they cannot... Oh man, they're so dead. <laughs> I'm not going to play any lands because they're going to have to kill all their own lands if they Sundering Titan. And I know they have memory lapse available, so there's no point in casting Blood Artist. Because they're just going to memory lapse. So I think they played the island from hand. Ooh! <laughs> Cutting it close! I wonder if I was supposed to play Blood Artist to play around a board wipe. I don't think so, but this definitely seems like a smallpox matchup, I think. A terrible Settle the Wreckage matchup, so I'm glad I didn't play that. Uh, maybe it's... Maybe not on the draw. Probably not on the draw. We'll just run it like this. Um, yeah, I like this hand. I like the Freebooter in this hand um, because we can disrupt them and i can go turn one soldier of the pantheon so i'm gonna go this only works if you control four or more lands that it enters untapped i'm trying to decide how i can do everything i want to do i guess i'm just gonna go planes into soldier and then arid mesa for a godless shrine depending on what i draw i see why nobody took this i thought this was the one that gets a basic land Maybe this is what I thought it was. I don't know. <laughs> I thought there was one that just gets a basic and you pay life. Um, I didn't realize this was the one that you have to have four lands in play. That makes it a lot worse. It's just a tapped. In fact, I might just cut this card. Because the, the entering tapped is so bad and like I have enough black fixing. They played it untapped. Interesting. This looks like a memory lapse to me. It's attack for two. So I drew a planes. So I'm deciding what to do here. Imposing Sovereign hits harder. The Freebooter is probably just better though. I know they almost certainly have counter magic, um, but I don't mind them like using it here because it's going to hit us. Oh, they don't. What the heck? Now I have no idea. <laughs> Literally no idea. Um, I can take the disc. They don't have any white mana. And then Imposing Sovereign protects against Secure the Wastes. Sure. Okay, so they just shocked because their only hope was... Oh, no. I, every time I've played, I think I've had this card, and it's such a frustrating situation. So I know what they drew. So Secure the Waste, Thran Dynamo, Yavimaya Coast, Oracle, Island. So they played Yavimaya Coast. So I know the four cards are in their hand now. Okay. Next turn, they're going to play Oracle, and it's going to enter tapped. Well, maybe I don't care about it entering tapped. I just played Benelish Marshall. Hit them for like a million... And then next turn I can go Imposing Sovereign, Declaration in Stone. Yeah, that seems fine. Or even better, I just oust their Oracle. Ancestral Vision is so slow. So they can go Island, Oracle. No white mana for Secure the Waste. And even if they did, it's not going to help them. They hit Mimic Vat. <laughs> this deck is such a mess. <laughs> I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it's a mess. Um, so they have Secure the Waste. So we are going to... Fabled Passage will enter untapped, although I guess it doesn't matter. We're going to go Imposing Sovereign, oust their Oracle. Or wait, do they die? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. They go to 1. I don't mind just doing this. I don't want to give them the opportunity to draw more cards. Hit them for a bunch. And now Secure the Wastes for blockers is not going to work. Central Vision does not completely tick down, and they think they just die. Because they would need... We know the two cards in their hand. I don't know of any board wipes that are playable in these colors. Yeah, they would need to draw like planes and another spell, um, which is why we didn't Declaration in Stone, right? Because then they could sack this to draw a card, and if they draw planes plus Wrath of God, then we're in trouble. Things like that. See so you guys, round two. Um, uh, also, welcome round two. I'm deciding if I keep this hand. I think five lands we can do better. It does have all of our mana. Oh, I was supposed to cut this card. I always forget to cut that card. I'm going to mulligan. Five lands is too much, and Blood Artist isn't that impactful. This hand is absurd. Like, oh my gosh. We're going to keep this. I think I'm going to get rid of Imposing Sovereign. Although, I could get rid of Silver Blade, but that's going to be really good with Dreadhorde Invasion. So, I'm on the draw. Yeah, I'll get rid of this card. It is a 2-1.
Ooh, I like seeing islands. Dragon Skull Summit. So I'm gonna lead with, uh, let's see. I'm gonna lead with Godless Shrine because I'm gonna have to have it played untapped anyway. And this gives me the outs, like, if I want to play Dragon Skull Summit untapped next turn, I can. If I want to just play planes, I also can. Because either the alternative is leading with planes and then shocking myself to play the summit. Charming Prince. So because I have Tide Hollow Sculler, we're gonna go planes. Or because I have Charming Prince, we're gonna Tide Hollow Sculler, see what's going on in their hand. That gives me information. And then that'll help me for the rest of the game. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to take Thran Dynamo, I guess. And that'll lock them out from playing Ulamog for a good bit of time. And then if they get close to Ulamog, I can Charming Prince my Tide Hollow Scholar. And then grab the appropriate card. This is... What am I doing playing against all these very strange decks? Swamp, Signet. They just have Ulamog. <laughs> um, I do need to keep in mind that Mishra's Factory can become a 3-3. So... Strangely, that card is actually holding down the fort right now. Um, I guess I'll play around Days because why not? Um, Smuggler's Copter. And then I can like double strike with Silverblade Paladin off the Smuggler's Copter and hope that takes it down. Because this becomes, they can activate it and then pump it to make it a 3 3. So as much as I don't like it, I cannot attack here. Uh oh. Stop playing stuff. Okay, I can work with that. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's a lot of manas. Planes was absolutely perfect. So um, I can go Dreadhorde Invasion. Actually, maybe Planes wasn't that perfect. Because I'm probably just going to play Silverblade Paladin. So I'm going to crew with the Tide Hollow Scholar. Then we play the Paladin. Sorry, this is in the wrong spot. So we're going to Soul Bond with the Copter. And I'm just going to attack for. Six in the air. Definitely loot. Oh, I can discard a scrap heat. I'm just wondering, like, do I even care about Dreadhorde Invasion at this point? Like, that seems very slow compared to everything else. And this planes will let me double spell next turn. I'm gonna discard scrap heat. That's such good value. And I will play this land. So now the soul bond is gone. I can charming prince my smuggler's copter if I need to. Uh oh. Do they have wildfire? Okay, Solemn is fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. So still nowhere near Ulamog status. This is you control? Yeah. Actually, you own. Oh, wow. Charming Prince can undo if you get your stuff stolen. Um, Blood Artist might just seal the deal. So I'm going to go Charming Prince. No, I don't really want to blink anything. Because I want to discard Blood Artist to Scrap Heap Scrounger. So let's go Charming Prince. And the problem is the creature returns at the beginning of the end step, so I don't think there's any way... Soulbound after. Yeah, I don't think there's any way for me to trick the combat step here. Scry 2. Do I want Polluted Delta? Do I want Seeker of the Way? I think I just want, like, Manatai. There's some type of removal. And we crew here. Oh wait, this might work. Can I Soulbound with the Copter? No, just Charming Prince. So this becomes a 4-4. Four, four. I think I'm going to say no, because I want a double striking Scrap Heap Scrounger. So we move to combat. Just attack here. Discard Fabled Passage. And then now, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, if I play Blood Artist, they can't really wipe the board anymore either. Definitely no Soul Bond. I think I played that a bit wrong. Because I could have played Blood Artist pre-combat and swung out. I don't know. So opponent probably attacks with Solemn if they're trying to... Nope, they do nothing. Okay. Oh, that's good. So let's crew with the Tide Hollow Scholar. Although, I could just secure the waste for two, like three. Crew this and swing out. What do they do there? They block my Soldier of the Pantheon and Silverblade Paladin. Then they take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's not quite lethal. So I think I just like crewing with Tide Hollow Scholar and swinging with a bunch of creatures. We'll see what they do. This is like into the Royal Kit. Okay. So now if I swing out, they get to trade and draw a card and then Mistress Factory on Silverblade Paladin trades as well. So that's four creatures that die. So they're going to take four and then take two more. So they go to five. That seems probably good enough. 
And I can soul bond with Secure the Waste token at instant speed. Uh, I guess that block makes more sense to me. But now I get to keep my Silver Blade Paladin around. Yep, that gets pumped. Yes. So they both have double strike, doesn't matter too much. What matters is that Silver Blade Paladin stays alive. They go to 5. Go ahead. Now I have a creature in my graveyard for Scrap Heap Scrounger if I need to. So they need to kill Blood Artist, then wipe the board, and then present a clock that can kill me before like I take over with Smuggler's Copter, Dread Horde Invasion, Scrap Heap Scrounger. Okay. Um, the only way I was thinking they could come back there is maybe something like Settle the Wreckage. But that seemed unlikely. I think we're just going to run it the same way. Um, small box is kind of awkward against an opponent with a bunch of signets. So the, the deck, the main deck configuration is exactly what we want. Uh, I think I can keep this on the draw. It seems like we just need one planes. And our deck is mostly planes. Opposing Sovereign. That's also quite good. So we can go turn one figure. I keep forgetting to cut the stupid land that enters tapped. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's me. Wow, this is a completely different deck in mana base than I saw round one. Planes? Scrap Heap. Uh, I think I like just jamming Scrap Heap Scrounger here. It hits harder. And I didn't really see many creatures from the opponent that would, like, block. Please don't be Thran Dynamo. Okay. Can work with Solemn. I can Swords to Plowshare Solemn. Although, I need to draw planes to make everything work like, as I would like. They didn't get a mountain, so they probably don't have Wildfire. Polluted Delta can grab Godless Shrine. Okay. Um, Polluted Delta, sack this. Godless Shrine, pay two life. Yes. What am I doing here? I can play History of Banalia and then attack with Scrap Heap, but then they get a card. Um, I think I like just going Swords to Plowshares on Solemn, playing Imposing Sovereign, and hitting for four. They don't get the card off Solemn. Solemn can't block all my like infinite tutus I'm about to have. I still have Vindicate as an answer to whatever else they might have. And if they don't do anything, I can play History of Benalia. And this is Knights. So this is Noble, Construct. Okay. I don't like what is this much mana. Hydroid Crisis. Well, I can at least Vindicate that, but... Oh, it even enters tapped. I don't even have to Vindicate it. Good work, Imposing Sovereign. All right, Dragon Skull Scummit actually being kind of nice because I can level up my figure now. So I can play this, play History of Benalia. Level this up, and then hit them for a bunch. They go to 11. If they try and play a blocker, it's not going to work. Then I can Vindicate the Hydroid Crisis. Hit them for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, that gives them more mana, which is good for them, but I can work with it. Nowhere near Ulamog. They get Mishra's Factory, which makes sense. Steam Vents untapped. Okay, so they're at 9. So if they can't counter what I'm doing here, they actually just die. Kill this boy. Did they just die? I don't know. They, they must have a removal spell, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That is 9. Hmm. They paid 2. I guess it's still a net gain for them, but they're in a lot of trouble. They're at 1 life. I don't have any reach or any burn except for Blood Artist. So if they... Wipe the board here, they can stabilize, but now silent clearing they cannot tap for mana. Uh-oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, that looks good for me. Alright, I think I win. They conclave tribunal one and they cannot tap silent clearing. So I win. Sweet. See you guys in the finals. Alright, we are here in the finals against Violent Outburst. Opponent get like a fun. Sometimes I forget to do that, but it's okay. Let's go first. Uh, Fable Passage is actually fine here. I'm going to keep this hand. It's a little bit awkward, but it's got three lands and a bunch of spells. So it's not the end of the world. We're going to start with Fabled Passage for a Plains. Then I can Godless Shrine for probably Seeker of the Way. Opponent said something too, I think. You too, thank you. How do they ponder? They chose to not shuffle. Okay, I mean, that can mean many things turn one. Get our Plains. Ancestral Blade. Um, that's going to come up. So we're going to lead with um, Secret of the Way. And then we can play Ancestral Blade if we feel like we need to gain life. Otherwise, I can just play Silver Blade Paladin and hit for four. Seeker Wayfinder. All right, what are they doing over there? Growth Spiral, Elvish Mystic, War the Rogue. Okay. Oh, I think we found a much better card to play here. 
Let's go Dragon's Hole Summit, Smuggler's Copter, give this lifelink. Copter's so good, oh my gosh. I also feel like against the green deck, Blood Artist is going to be nice. Because we're going to get into a position probably where we're both building up pretty large board states. And if either of us swings out, then Blood Artist is going to be able to um, gain us a lot of life, do a lot of damage to the opponent. Just give them unfavorable trades. Tireless Tracker, okay. Secure the Wastes. So I really want to draw a land because being able to Declaration and Stone the Tracker seems quite good. Um, so I can go Ancestral Blade. I guess I can also offer this trade because that seems fine for me. So I go Ancestral Blade and then attack with Seeker, crew the Copter here. If I draw a land, perfect. If I don't draw a land, it's not the end of the world. Or I could just really push the objective here. Equip Ancestral Blade to Seeker of the Way, make them take seven. Actually, that seems better. Because the odds of me hitting a land here are kind of low. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I guess at this point I get rid of Declaration in Stone. Because next turn I can go like Blood Artist Swords to Plowshares. Man, that feeling when your hand is just too good. All right, goodbye, Declaration. They go to 13. I go to 25. So they play a land to get a clue or don't play a land. Maybe they don't have a land. Uh oh. No, never mind. Ooh, the booter. I kind of like the Kite Sail Free Booter here because it shows me what they have in hand so I can play around any tricks. Um, it can crew the Copter. Alternatively, there's just Blood Artist. But I think I like the booter. It also plays around counter magic because if they have counter magic, they have to counter this. Okay, condescend. Interesting, they did not condescend. Um, each player returns a non-land permanent with the highest CMC. So okay, so we can just return ancestral blade. So that's not that scary. So I guess I just take condescend. Um, they can play Ishkana next turn, which makes a ton of reach spiders. At which point we can Blood Artist and take over the game that way. So we take Condescend, Crew the Copter. I think I can attack with Seeker the way here. Because they can block with Mistress Factory if they want to. Yeah, this seems like a fine attack. Obviously we loot. Ooh, we can play Soldier this turn. Ishkana is not multicolored. I think I'm going to discard Silver Blade. Let me read Ishkana again. Holy cow, they have so many revealed cards. They make three spiders and they have creature, instant sorcery, enchantment. So they actually have to sacrifice this this turn. So I think they're just going to make spiders and then um, they can block my flyer. So I'm just going to discard Silver Blade Paladin. There are 17 revealed cards. <laughs> Kaisel Freebooter is the bane of my existence. Um, I'm okay with this trade right now. Okay. And I just get to go Soldier of the Pantheon. They crack Vessel and then they play the Spider. Oh gosh, I don't even know. There are too many cards here. I think they take Nimble Obstructionist. And Ishkana has Reach as well, right? Yeah. What did they take? Interesting, they took Utopia Sprawl. Because they don't have the mana for Ishkana right now. Right? Forest, Island, Nimble Obstructionist, Utopia Sprawl. But as far as I'm aware, they don't have... I don't actually know what's in their hand because I, I can't... It's impossible to tell when they've revealed this many cards. Okay, they play the spider, which is what we were afraid of. They get a bunch of little, bunch of little reach dudes. Ooh, oust is pretty good. Oust is pretty good. They're going to gain a whole bunch of life in the process. But I can Swords the Plowshares Ishkana. I wish I knew it was in their hand. I think it's... All those were discarded. Right, Oracle is still... No, it looks like Oracle's in their hand. So they have like Oracle, um, Discovery, Dispersal. I took Condescend. Okay, so it looks like Oracle, Discovery, Dispersal, and one unknown. So if I can clear the air, which I think starts with Swords on Ishkana, and then just crewing this Copter with our 1-1, one, one, and equipping the Blade that gives it 4 power, and I can attack there. Loot, yes. Um, Polluted Delta is fine. That's probably 
better than oust because then I can play blood artist this turn. I don't really want to give them the life off of oust. They take four. We go delta for our one swamp. Play blood artist. Go ahead. And then I can play secure the wastes for four. Getting three tokens. All right, opponent's going to draw two or surveil two, then draw a card. I gain a life because of the beautiful, beautiful soldier of the Pantheon. And this could be setting up for the Oracle, which I think they have, but I can neither confirm nor deny its existence. It's just in the revealed cards. And they put both on top? What the heck? I'm trying to think what it could be. Like a way to kill Smuggler's Copter? Oh, that's significantly better. All right. There's the Oracle. That was a good... And they hit land on top! Oh, I don't like that. They hit two lands on... Uh, they already played a land, though. Okay, so two lands on top is actually good for me. Charming Prince. I don't care that much about that. Let's just keep the strategy of crew the copter, equip the blade, hit them in the air. I guess I can attack with Soldier of the Pantheon, too, because if they block it, they lose two more life and Mishra's factory is tapped down now which makes it better I can discard Arid Mesa I don't think I need that and then depending on how they take this damage um, I can maybe make secure the wastes because I could just create a bunch of creatures they must block like their best block here is one spider on copter one spider on soldier they lose three and go to six and then I have still four power in the air all right, so my opponent just disconnected. I will come back if they return or if I win because they rage quit. See you guys in a little bit. Hey, they came back. Thank goodness. I really wanted to play this game. Okay, so they trade. Okay, so they make the blocks we expected. Um, what I need to decide now. Uh, save targets to them. What I need to decide now is do I play Charming Prince? I think the answer to that is just yes. I want to set up my next draw step. We want to get max failure out of Secure the Wastes. And there's no creature. This is just creature, right? Yeah, there's no creature I can really do here. So let's just scry two. Uh, bottom, bottom. And then equip the blade over to the Charming Prince. Because that can block all their stuff. Okay, so they're going to draw a Mana Leak. That's something I can pretty much play around. Although, I... <laughs> wow, I'm halfway through my deck and I have four lands. That's the power of Smuggler's Copter. I've looted away, I guess, just one of them. But I've fetched, so I've hit one, two, three, seven. And I just scryed two to the bottom. So I'm actually about at the level you would expect to draw lands at. Um, if they just hold up Mana Leak forever, I might discard this to cure the wastes. But now I'm basically going to, if I have any opening, just jam this for as much mana as I have. Because those tokens are going to win me the game. I hope. Like... I don't know of many ways that blue green has to deal with blood artist one thing that could happen is if they have like an into the royal and then i set up like a big swing out and then they into the royal my blood artist and then just block all my one ones and then kill me would be pretty bad all right opponent just concedes after spending much time thinking i hope i get to play game two i've had so much problem with people just like conceding matches in games like these and i want to play it out like that's i you know i'm not playing to win i'm playing to have fun uh, let's see. They have... Ishkana is a big issue. Rampaging Ferocidon could be an interesting splash in this matchup. It's also really nice with Oust and Swords. Um, so in that case, I would cut one Plains for a Mountain. And then Fabled Passage becomes useful. I guess FTK is also interesting. Let's look at cards that are not good. Manatide is a little bit awkward against them, especially on the draw. Um, Secure the Wastes is fine. Let's see, I can probably make like three tokens with it. Plains for mountain. Or wait, how many red sources do I currently have? Uh, one, just one. So if I cut planes for mountain, I now have one, two, three, four red sources, which is totally enough to play a one of Rampaging Ferocidon. And I think this card is going to be worth running here. We're not destroying our mana base, we're playing one mountain. And I guess we have Dragon Skull Summit. And we have the Ferocidon, so I can go turn to Blood Artist into Ferocidon. Yeah, let's keep this. That's actually a really sick lock. Alright, Polluted Delta. Um, I'm just going to get Godless Shrine, because I want a bunch of white mana for History of Benalia. 
but I also want to be able to play Blood Artist and things like that. Okay, they could have Mana Leak. Pay two life, no. I think that's okay. Getting Blood Artist Mana Leak is not the worst thing in the world. Because it currently does nothing. And like, it's not like I have another play. And then I can actually play Ferocid on turn three. Um, turn four, play Silverblade Paladin and give this Double Strike Menace. Growth Spiral, okay. It's a good card. I think that card is phenomenal. Um, I don't want to see Oracle of Moldiah. Anything but Oracle or Tireless Tracker would be good. I guess Whirler Rogue would be annoying to see them play it before I resolve Ferocidon and not after. They do nothing. Interesting. Um, I think with them doing nothing, I mean, they're probably holding up Counter Magic. Um, exclude is in the cube, so I'm deciding do I want to just jam History or is getting down Rampaging Ferocidon that good? I'm going to get down History. I think Ferocidon is going to be good later, hopefully. And History also makes casting triplicate spirits easier because this is going to make two tokens, which have Vigilance. Okay, cool. Next turn I can go Silent Clearing, Attack with a Knight. Um, I can't tell if I'm excited about that exchange or not. Because if I'd played Ferocidon, they just bounce it and I lose tempo. This way at least I get a 2-2. I think that exchange is still fine for me. Ooh, and they're looking for cards. That's good for me too. They surveilled Seder Wayfinder in the graveyard, and they play Mistress Factory. Make a knight. Play Silent Clearing. Triplicate Spirits is the most mana efficient. We'll just do that. They mana leak it? Sure. Okay. Then we're going to play Ferocidon plus Ancestral Blade, hopefully. Um, and this way, I mean, we've saved ourselves from taking like a ton of life here. Hopefully they don't play Ishkanon now. Uh, sorcery creature instant, so they don't. Oh, well, they took the knight. <laughs> they didn't take blood artist. That's good. So that triggers. That's fine. Here we're going to play. Well, I could also play ancestral blade and then equip to a spirit. But I think I like getting down rampaging ferocidon. It's so good with blood artist. Last turn, they have a two-two. Uh oh, what is this? Oh, what? That's not cool. I do have Charming Prince. So that is something. What are they targeting? Him? Yeah. Um, I can Charming Prince back my Ferocidon. We'll take two. Are they going to be able to activate this? Three or more permanents you don't own. <laughs> if they activate that, I don't even know what to say. Um, okay. Well, Silverblade Paladin is the same amount of mana as Ancestral Blade. So I guess I just play the Blade. I take one. I equip to the Spirit so they just can't attack there. Last turn. Problem is now they're going to do something dumb like Ishkana and I'm just going to die. What is this ability? You draw a card? Draw three cards? <laughs> ah, if they have like, um, I don't know if Treachery is in this, but if they have something like that, I'm in big trouble. Okay, a lot of damage. Um, I can kill the Ferocidon. That makes it much worse if I do happen to draw Charming Prince. I can trade here and then take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess blocking this makes more sense. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep. And I cannot gain life because of my own stinking rampaging Ferocidon. <laughs> Oh boy. I need to kill this opponent very quickly next round if I don't win this. Okay, they don't do anything. That's good. Charming Prince. Kite Cell Freebooter. Doesn't really help. Let's go ahead and play Silverblade Paladin. I lose a life. And I'm going to Soul Bond with a Spirit. Or maybe a Soldier. Double Strike Soldier. Yeah, I'll Soul Bond with the Soldier. And then I equip the Blade here. So they can't attack with the Ferocidon. I'm down to six life though, which I don't like. Oh no, they have more. Stop playing spells. Okay. It's a 3-1. So I can at least block with a spirit. Currently at least. I almost wonder if they wanted to nimble obstructionist my ancestral blade equip. Planes, okay. Planes is good. Um so this is a 3-3 three, three double strike. They're not doing anything. So I don't really see the need to do anything, although I guess I can crack this, right? Because, again, if I can get my Charming Prince, which is a sentence I didn't think I would ever say, but... 
Uh, I might as well play the Freebooter just to see what's going on in there. They might mana leak me. Yeah, okay. No attacks. They got one card in hand. Charming Prince kind of just does it, I think. Soldier of the Pantheon. I can't gain life. How do I get out of this? <laughs> I honestly don't know. Huh. They have Mountain. I can go to 5 by playing a 2-2 two -two that can't block. I think I like playing Imposing Sovereign better. That way, if they play something to like ambush me, it doesn't do as much. Last turn. Okay. Planes? That's a lot of land, but it's not the end of the world. Although I think I'm going to start keeping these in hand. Um, what if I equip the blade here and attack? It'll have double strike. That seems reasonable. Because then I could just play another creature. They're forced to start losing stuff in the process. And losing a bunch of life too, hopefully. Okay, they're going to trade for Mistress Factory. That makes sense. Please don't pump. Okay, they do. So we hit, and then we hit, and then we both trade. They lose some life. But I'm going to four here. Which is very low. Let's play Soldier. Take a damage. Soul Bond here. Equip the Blade here. Actually, I guess it makes more sense to equip the Blade here, huh? Go ahead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They all have Death Touch. It's not, that's honestly not the worst thing still. Yeah, I don't think they can really attack here. Ooh, Vindicate. Uh, what do I do? I can Vindicate the Sower, I can Vindicate this big flying thing. I think I just like Vindicating the Ferocidon though. 2-6, yeah, the Death Touch part doesn't matter that much. They take when I gain one. That's really big. Um, now I'm just gonna play a land and... I guess I want to attack with both of my creatures. Hit them for five. I still have four blockers back. I can gain all this life and then Order of Midnight back the um, thing. Oh, okay. Well, now I could just get back Silverblade Paladin. And in the process, they're going to take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and fall to three life if they do it this way. This has been a crazy game so far. Okay. I think taking it just makes more sense. I think, whoa, double chump? Okay. Don't know how double chump is ever the correct play, but I guess we'll see what's in hand. That, what? <laughs> that play made no sense to me. So I gained a bunch of life. I can just alter fate to get back the Rampaging Ferocidon, because now I'm not really that scared of much. And then I can equip this to a spirit just in case. Go ahead. So they can't play any blockers because I have Imposing Sovereign down. They just attack there. I'll chump with one flyer. They go to nine. Okay. I draw a land. That's actually still fine here. I can... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if I equip this over here, they have to block one of them. Put this over here, I guess. Because they're more incentivized to kill the Silver Blade Paladin. Right, so they block here. They take 4, 5 damage. Sure. They go even lower. I can then play my Ferocidon. And then secure the ways to block the Frostfang. This Merrick Gale. Counter-Strike spell with converted mana cost 3 or less. Okay. Um, this is this a flash? No. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pass here. Um, they can't play untapped creatures. I can make two tokens. Um, if they attack with a Frost Fang, I can like super chump them. All right, yeah. It, there was a lot of different lines I could have taken there, but finally got a trophy in this cube. <laughs> Decisive one too, 3060. With, I don't even know if this was the best deck I've had. It was really good. Um, Ferocidon was a great splash in that last game. Blood Artist was the MVP. I considered cutting him, but he was just amazing in every game. Uh, Never, no, I did get to cast Benelish Marshall and he was good. The deck was great. I loved it. See you guys next time.